Today, I'm visiting Bernadette Dutton of Low Quee Speech Pathology. I got so overwhelmed by all the shiny things that I forgot to film an establishing sequence. Still, we were very warmly welcomed into her clinic for a traditional assessment of a rather non-traditional voice. Tom, I'd like you to say an ah sound for me for as long as you can. So take the biggest breath you can and just do a long ah for as long as you can and I'll time you. Uh, 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 that is that, wonderful. But... Look, the maximum was 1,923 hertz. That is very high. That is extremely high. Whereas men's range is around anywhere between the average pitch of a male is around 100 hertz mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and a female's about 200. Right. So that's huge, that's high. It's not what we usually use in speech. Mm -hmm. However, you're using it as, a, as entertainment. No, <laughs> you're using it as entertainment and bring that high yeah. tongue and narrow through there. Now, the other thing you also do is you're using digital pressure against the larynx to get mm -hmm. a different sound. So if I'm going like that and I get a different sound, whereas you can change the sound just by yeah, so just by tapping my throat, I generally just change the pitch of something as well. Um, so every time I tap, I will go to a different note. So I'll go like... So basically anything that you can physically manipulate from the exterior, you can create a different sound from. So even with the cheek as well, like... And um, the nose, like, <laughs> there's so many different ways to. And like, I can't think, yeah, that is it. You've used those sounds that we don't normally use in speech. You're trying to use, and you're creating fantastic new sounds. That yeah. You have to analyze or assess or, or repair. Yeah, there's yeah. so many different mechanisms that you can kind of put into play to alter the sound of the human voice. After a series of rather loud emasculating tests to establish my vocal range, we moved on to my breathing and diaphragmatic control. All beatboxers rely heavily on their breathing, so we decided to explore mine a little further. So I wanted to just highlight how much you're using your um, breathing mm -hmm. when you do your beatboxing, and I just noticed how a lot there's a lot of um, different patterns happening. You've got sometimes clavicular breathing with the, the um, shoulders come up to get a little quick shallow breathing, and then there's um, chest breathing, and then there's that diaphragmatic breathing there. So can you do a couple of your short ones, your sort of your quick inhalation type mm -hmm. um, beatboxings? Yeah. Um. So notice that keep going, that chest coming up, rapid breathing, quick breath, inhalation breath. So there's a lot of that fast breathing in and out. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you do that's more sustained that comes from diaphragmatic breathing? You need a big um, sound. Or maybe like some of the like... Yep. Okay, you take that short breath there. Great control. So that's you all could like. Do that as long as you could, almost until your body went. Hang on, take a breath. Yeah, you yeah, get exactly. Get, uh, yeah, well, um, that's all inwards. Inward breaths. breaths. You're getting all that air from out. Yeah. There's, there's plenty of it, but it's how your body will need to then yeah, spell yeah. out you balance. Sometimes that I get pretty dizzy. Lightheaded. Like yeah, yeah. If yeah. I'm doing like one particular pattern I for a long time, not like be the, surprised. Yeah, there's yeah. been times where I've been like. Oh well, God. Yeah, because you're just getting all that oxygen from out, and you're not allowing any. You're only like controlling. Um, a little bit of the carbon dioxide and the oxygen to leave that you could you're going to get an imbalance so yes you wouldn't want to do that for too long yeah right there you go <laughs> i wonder what beatboxing at altitude would be like i think what you've done is again you're you're breathing normally now mm -hmm. when you speak you're breathing well yeah it's just that when you're doing your beatboxing you're just using your um 
inhalation, your exhalation, and the way you control your chest and your breathing so differently to, mm. to support that sound that you want to get. And so just in terms of everything that you've seen, the actual anatomical makeup of what's inside, like the what's under the hood, yeah. is pretty much the same as what you've seen. It's just more so the way I use it, which That's is right. different. Yeah, I think, you know, um, it is your um, anatomy is unique to you, but it's all structurally intact and no abnormalities. There's nothing abnormal in um, any of the presentation looking in, in your scope. The ENT said it was all normal. Where mm -hmm. you spent time perfecting that sound. It's like a higher intelligence for vocal percussion. So once again, we found nothing abnormal about my laryngeal anatomy. We did, however, discover that my vocal range is higher than the average man, which I suspect inhibits my capacity to grow a luxurious beard. We also highlighted the beatbox's unique ability to manipulate breathing patterns while forming sounds. In the next episode, we're going to focus on some of my favourite beatboxes from around the world and explore the diverse range of styles and techniques that are out there reverberating around the ether. Till next time, peace!